Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church, Moton. I'm Pastor Wayne Heinzelman, and we welcome you to worship on the second Sunday in Lent. And we begin with the prelude for the sermon. We begin with the order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close to Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace by the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and the power of God. Your sins are forgiven and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning, our gathering hymn, is Our Father, We Have Wandered. In the ELW, it is hymn 606.
Thank you, Christine. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Oh God, by the passion of your blessed Son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us so to glory in the cross of Christ that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Oh, this morning I see some children. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Nice to see you. Um, do you recognize these? Gloves. Gloves, yep. They, they are garden gloves. And I was thinking Jesus calls us to follow him. And following Jesus, we serve one another. We serve others. And one way that you can serve your parents or maybe your grandparents is to help with the garden. As a matter of fact, that's how I learned the difference between plants and weeds. I would do the gardening for my grandmother and she would stand right over me and point to which uh, plants were, which, which, uh, were plants and which were the weeds to pull. But that would be a way that you could serve your parents or your grandparents. And of course, there are lots of other ways to serve in your house, right? in terms of taking care of your room or helping to clean up after dinner, um, many ways to serve the family. And an important way today to serve and care about other people is wear a mask, right? Uh -huh. Because the mask protects other people as well as yourself. Mm -hmm. And what Jesus is asking us to do as followers is to love and to care about one another. 
And so if you can do that today and each day, and you're caring for someone and loving them and serving them, that is following Jesus. Thank you for your attention. And I hope it won't be I hope it won't be too many more weeks before you can be working in the garden. <laughs> okay. We hope so too. Yeah. March is coming. Have a good day. Have a good day. Hey, you too. Have a good day. Our first lesson is from the 17th chapter of Genesis. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her. And moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. Here is the reading of our first lesson. Our psalm today is 22, verses 23 through 31. You who fear the Lord, give praise. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. Stand in awe of the Lord, all you offspring of Israel. For the Lord does not despise nor abhor the poor in their po poverty. Neither is the Lord's face hidden from them. But when they cry out, the Lord hears them. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, the Lord has acted. <clears throat> Our second reading is from the fourth chapter <clears throat> of Romans. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us. As it is written, 
I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist, hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said. So numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and raised for our justification. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> the God. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and he reject, be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Before uh, today's lesson, the disciples are with Jesus in Caesarea Philippi, where there's a, uh, a spring of water named Panias for Pan, the Greek god of desolate places. This is a uh, location of pagan worship. It's an uncomfortable place for the disciples to be. What I'd like to do this morning is uh, use a video to refresh our memory of those uh, scripture verses that precede, immediately precede today's lesson. So we will begin with this video. We were walking by the gates of hell not the, not the literal gates of hell, but uh, the ones at Caesarea Philippi, where the, uh, where the pagan worshipers had their idols. We're walking by and we are, we're nervous. Our, our hearts are beating out of our chest because we're Jewish men. This is not our place. We don't fit in. We're wondering why we're there. And Jesus stops and he looks at us and he just asks this question. Who do people say I am? Okay, well, we think uh, Bar Bartholomew, he spoke up. Bart said, some people say John the Baptist. 
someone else, uh, I don't remember who it was, said, some people say a prophet, someone else said Elijah. And then Jesus just interrupts us and he says, what about you? Who do you say I am? That's, that's a big question. You don't want to get this one wrong. So we're all sitting there in awkward silence. And Peter just starts pointing. Nothing's coming out of his mouth, just pointing. And then it just came out. You are the Christ. And Jesus just smiles. When he smiled, it just... Anyway, that's, that's when I, I noticed that the whole time we'd been talking, Jesus had been digging in the dirt. He would do that. He stands up and he's got this stone in his hand. I'm paraphrasing, but he basically said, you're right, I'm the Christ. And, and then he looked at Peter and he said, you're the rock, a rock on which to build my church. A church that will be so strong that not even the gates of hell will prevail against it. So, who do I say he is? I saw things that to this day I can't explain. I experienced a love so deep that it changes you from the inside out. He is the Christ. And like he said, he's coming back to rescue us. And nothing can stop him. Nothing. Not even the gates of hell can stop him. Today's text uh, continues from what took place at Caesarea Philippi. And today's text offers the first of three passion predictions in Mark's gospel. There's the passion prediction in this chapter 831, and there's a passion prediction in 931, and then in 1033 to 34. And each, each of which uses similar language to declare that the Son of Man will be killed and after three days he will rise again. This first passion prediction that is recorded <clears throat> is the most detailed, uh, describing the suffering and the, the rejection of Jesus, the Son of Man, and what he must endure and identifying the religious authorities of Israel who will align themselves against him, the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes. And Jesus makes this all, all stunningly clear prediction, per easier, openly, or plainly. But his declaration is unacceptable to the disciples. There were numerous um, types of messianic expectations in, in, first, in the first century Judaism. <clears throat> the Messiah could be a, a great leader, a military leader, could be a new prof prophet, could be a divinely a, a ordained king, but no one, no one was looking for a humble Messiah who suffered who would be rejected by all the Jewish leadership, who would be tortured and killed. 
Now, across the uh, the centuries, we Christians in our theology, we, we easily make the uh, connection between Jesus' passion predictions and the suffering servant of Isaiah. But in Judaism, the servant had never been associated with the figure of the Messiah. So little wonder why Peter reacts the way he does. He's, he's stunned, he's horrified. Little wonder that Peter seeks to rebuke the one that he had just confessed as Messiah. Jesus' harsh rebuke of Peter doesn't uh, perhaps sound so uh, um, so bad when when it's aimed at uh, a disciple who had the audacity <laughs> to to try and uh, tell Jesus that he was wrong about what was going to happen to him. It's another thing uh, to have Jesus's words directed at each one of us in the 21st century. That there is to be one leader whom we follow. And that leader, Jesus Christ, is a servant king. There's a uh, story of a <clears throat> snow white hair and soothing southern drawl pastor by the name of Bessie Parker. And of course, because of the way she looked, she epitomized everyone's idea of a grandmother. And she used this to her full advantage. <clears throat> so when the church that she was serving repeatedly refused to take care of the leaking roof, the members were scandalized when on a Monday morning on the rooftop, they saw their pastor, white hair, blue jeans and all atop the roof, hammering away, trying to patch the roof. Well, the roof was quickly, quickly repaired and everyone willingly assisted. One member said, it just don't look right to have your grandmother up fixing the roof. Well, toward the end of uh, Bessie's ministry, the bishop uh, sent her to a very difficult church, one infamous for feuding, contentiousness, racism, and animosity toward the Methodist denomination. Before Bessie arrived, the church had already uh, uh, run off two pastors in a six month period. The bishop seemed um, cruel to send Bessie to, to this kind of congregation a short time before her retirement, but she went. And at a conference a short time later, a pastor asked Bessie how, how she and the congregation were getting along. And, and Bessie said, they are the sweetest people I have ever known. Well, the pastor was dumbfounded. What about its, uh, its, its hatefulness, its, its racism? Um, had there been no problems? Well, not really, said Bessie. There was one little misunderstanding when we voted on this year's uh, budget. Misunderstanding, the, the, the pastor asked. Well, yes, yeah, we, we, we got to the appointment uh, apportionment that we pay to the Black College Fund. And when we were about to vote our acceptance of that uh, budget item, the chairman, the chairman of our board said, Reverend, Reverend Parker, we don't give no money to that because we ain't paying for no N-word to get to go to college. Oh, well, what did you do? The pastor asked Bessie. She said, I, 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 I stood up and said, John, 
that's not nice. You sit down and act like a Christian. Everything else passed without uh, a single problem. Good advice. Sometimes we may need to act first. And the belief, the acceptance, the positive feelings uh, come later. But we are called to be followers. So act like a Christian means we follow Jesus' teachings. And we know those basic teachings so well. <clears throat> John Wesley uh, responds to a question of what can I do for the kingdom? He said, uh, do all the good you can by all the means you can in all the ways you can in all the places you can at all the times you can to all the people you can as long as ever you can. Yes. May we be Christians who act like them. God's work, our hands. Ryan, Reinhold Niebuhr in a prayer related to this passage said, oh Lord, who has taught us that to gain the whole world and to lose our souls is great folly. Grant us the grace so to lose ourselves that we may truly find ourselves anew in the life of grace. And so to forget ourselves that we may be remembered in your kingdom, that we would act like a Christian and serve as your people. Amen. I have um, said to the staff that, that <clears throat> after we've had so many readings and uh, preaching that uh, I like a break, whether it's a, uh, well, a music break, whether it's a hymn or a solo or a video with music. And this morning, uh, what I've chosen is a, um, a music video. It's come it's called Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. And it could be shown at Christmas time, but because we've talked about the Messiah, uh, this video takes us through uh, the, the history of arriving to the time of Jesus' birth and reminds us of the coming of the Messiah and Jesus' declaration to his disciples that, yes, I am the Messiah. So let us listen to Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Born a child and 
we continue our worship with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. Your gift of grace is for all people. Give confident faith to all the baptized that they may follow you wholeheartedly. Give hope and courage to those who suffer for their faith. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. All the ends of the earth worship you. Teach humanity to wonder at your works and to join you in tending to creation's well-being. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In Jesus, you joined humanity in suffering and death. Reveal to all the depth of your love shown on the cross. Accompany all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. Restore all who are sick or grieving, especially those who are suffering from COVID and other illnesses. For Joan and Carol, John and Doris Marie, for Ruth, and Hank, and Fern, and Fern, and Barbara, and all those, Lord, that we name in our hearts before you. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You made Abraham and Sarah the ancestors of a multitude of nations. Bless grandparents and parents and foster parents and the children who look to them for care and guidance. Console those who deal with infertility, parents who have entrusted their children to adoption, children longing to be adopted. Equip ministries and services to families, our food pantries and opportunity house and family promise and the many other ministries in our area. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. And for all of those in the healthcare, some of them with so many, many months of serving with patients of COVID, give them the continued strength they need to carry on in their caregiving. Be with those who serve our nation and Lord, may your favor rest on our families. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We await the day of Christ's coming in glory. Lead us by the example of all the saints whom you have called to take up their cross and follow you, that together we may find our lives in you. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We thank you for your continued offerings that you mail and drop off at the office for the ministry of St. John's. And blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. It is through your goodness that you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered 
in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us pray together the words our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord grant you favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is Come Thou Font of Every Blessing, 807 in ELW. Let us go in peace and share the good news. Thanks be to God.